Hello everybody, thank you for joining us for another story time today. Today, October 21st, is actually International Reptile Awareness Day. So people all over the world are celebrating different kinds of reptiles, they're learning about reptiles, and they're learning how we can help conserve reptiles or save reptiles that might be endangered or in trouble. Who can think of what type of animals reptiles are? Can anybody give an example? Yeah, if you said snakes, lizards, turtles, crocodiles, alligators, all those animals are reptiles. So our story today is going to be about a reptile, specifically a turtle. But our story today is also a folktale, which is a little different than the stories I typically read. We can get folktales from cultures from all over the world, so it's pretty cool to hear stories from different places. And folktales have been passed down for generations and generations and generations. So these stories have existed for hundreds of years, often before they were ever written down in books. And people had to tell those stories orally, we call that. Um, so they passed them down by telling the younger kids the stories, and then those kids would grow up and tell their kids' stories. Um, so they've been passed down for a really long time. Sometimes you might have different versions of the same story, because not everybody tells the story the same way. A lot of times our folk tales might have some type of lesson in them. They're trying to teach us something. Um, so see if you can see any of that in our story today. And we also have a type of folk tale called a trickster's tale, where one of the characters tries to trick the other characters a lot in the story. So see if you can see that in our book as well. All right, the last thing I want to tell you is at the end of our book, it tells a little bit of history about the story and where it came from and, and where it was first heard. Um, so I'll read that at the end. But otherwise, our story, you're going to see why I picked it and why it called to me. Um, it's about a turtle, and she's a dancing turtle. So it was perfect for our organization. So here we go. It's called The Dancing Turtle, a folktale from Brazil. It was written by Pleasant de Spain and illustrated by David Boston. And you can tell what part of Brazil, what habitat it's going to take place in. That's right, the rainforest. Can you name any of those animals? How about this animal? Can you name this animal? bright warning colors say stay away I'm poisonous poison dart bug. all right long ago on the bank of the mighty Amazon River turtle played her flute while enjoying the Sun she played the high notes and the low notes she played the fast ones and the slow ones she played her flute with such skill and joy that before long she felt like dancing turtle laid down her flute and began to dance her happiest dance around and around she twirled going this way and that she bobbed and weaved and jumped and crawled dancing all the while then she stopped her dance was done she pulled her head and legs into her shell and went to sleep Being asleep, she didn't notice the two dark eyes of a large man peering at her from behind a broad green leaf. She didn't hear the rumble of hunger in his stomach. She didn't feel his strong brown hand grab hold of her shell until it was too late. Got you, he cried. My family will soon feast on turtle soup. He shoved turtle and her flute into his bag and began the long walk home. It was dark by the time he arrived. Uh-oh. Look at the fat turtle I've caught, he said to his two children. I heard a flute playing in the forest and followed the sweet sounds to the edge of the river. There, I saw the turtle dancing. And when she finished, she went to sleep. It was easy to catch her. I'll put her in a cage and we will make a fine soup with her tomorrow. The man put turtle in a cage made of strong sticks. He tied the door shut. Turtle couldn't escape. In the morning, the father decided to work in the fields. He told his boy and girl, stay home and take care of Turtle. Don't let her out of the cage for any reason. I'll be home when the sun goes down and we'll cook her for supper. 
The man picked up his hoe and walked to the fields. While the children played near the hut, Turtle thought and thought about her difficulty. Then she had an idea. What do you think Turtle is going to do? What might her idea be? She picked up her flute and began to play. She played the high notes and the low notes. She played the fast ones and the slow ones. She played so sweetly and so well that the girl ran to the cage and said, Play more, Turtle! Please, play more! I can do more than play tunes, answered Turtle. I can dance as well. The children had never seen a turtle dance before. The boy said, You can't dance. Turtles can't dance. You're trying to trick us. I couldn't trick you, said Turtle. Children are too smart. All the forest animals know better than to try to trick children. What do you think? Do you think that's true? She's not going to try to trick them? Do you know any other stories where animals might try to trick children? Would you try to escape if we let you out? Asked one of the children. Of course not, said Turtle. I only want to show you how well I can dance. But if you don't want to see me dance, then I'll put my flute away and go back to sleep. No, the boy cried. You must show us. He untied the rope, opened the door, and took Turtle out of the cage. You think Turtle's going to stay, or is Turtle going to get away? Turtle played her flute. She played the high notes and the low notes. She played the fast ones and the slow ones. She played her flute with such skill and joy that she felt like dancing. Turtle laid down her flute and began to dance her happiest dance. Around and around she twirled, going this way and that. She bobbed and weaved and jumped and crawled, dancing all the while. Then she stopped. Her dance was done. Again, cried the children, dance again. Yes, Turtle panted. As soon as I catch my breath, carry me over to the shade trees where I can cool down. The girl picked Turtle up and carried her to the edge of the forest where the largest of the shade trees stood. I'll take a little nap, said Turtle, and then I'll be ready to dance again. Go and play your games. I'll play my flute, my flute when I'm rested. What do you think Turtle's going to do? After the children left, Turtle began crawling through the jungle under, undergrowth. She didn't rest or play her flute until she was safely home by the river. When the children grew tired of their games, they ran back to the shade tree, calling, Turtle, where are you? Turtle, you said you would dance for us again. Where are you hiding? There was no answer. Turtle had tricked them after all. Their father would be so angry. They sat on the ground and thought and thought. Soon the girl had an idea. She found a large rock shaped like turtle shell. She painted the rock to look just like turtle and placed it in the cage. The boy tied the door with a rope and the children hoped for the best. What do you think? Do you think their dad won't notice that it's a rock and not a turtle? Their hungry father arrived home as the sunlight was fading. He put a pot of water on the fire and waited for it to boil. Then he opened the cage and pulled the rock from inside. Turtle is still asleep, he whispered to his children, but she weighs more than I remember. He plopped the painted stone into the pot. Bring the big serving plate, he said, the one made of hard clay. It will soon be time to eat. The children were frightened, but said nothing. They brought the plate and set it before their father. He took the rock from the pot and dropped it onto the plate. The plate broke into many pieces. The father looked carefully at the rock. Then he looked even more carefully at his children. You let the turtle out of its cage, didn't you? Yes, father. We're sorry, said the girl. Turtle said she wouldn't trick us, and then she did, said the boy. Turtle is very clever, father said. More clever than I thought. Don't worry, children. I'll catch her again tomorrow, and then we'll have our turtle soup. Did he ever catch turtle again?
What do you think? So this story doesn't really give us a true ending. It kind of leaves it open for what you think might have happened. We see him and Turtle not very far away, but we know Turtle is very, very tricky and good at getting away. So it's up to you if you think that she got caught or if she lived happily ever after. All right, I'll read this little bit about the story real quick. It says, I love stories of Turtle from throughout the world. It is, however, the Latin American tales that most intrigue me. Like the people of Latin America, Turtle, has, Turtle always seems to survive with courage and wit. The dancing turtle was first told by the indigenous people of Brazil and was initially collected by Jose Vieira Codode Magajales in O Salvagem, Rio de Janeiro, 1876. Sorry if I pronounce any of those names wrong. It was, of course, told by villagers for hundreds of years before 1876 and is still being told today. So a lot of these very old stories are what we call an oral tradition. That means they were never written down. People just passed them along from generation to generation by telling the story, maybe around a campfire or while you're doing chores around the campsite. Um, but there was never a written record before 1876. A few years ago, I journeyed to the jungles of Costa Rica in Nicaragua and asked my various guides to share a story about turtle. It was this story with a variety of imaginative and cultural variants that was most often told. A 14-year-old Costa Rican boy named Juan Carlos, who spoke as little English as I did Spanish, acted out this version of the dancing turtle as we traveled upriver on a small leaky boat. He perfectly pantomimed turtle's capture and escape and nearly tipped the boat over as he demonstrated her skill at dancing. That would be fun. Juan Carlos's father, who was also the boat's captain, sternly rebuked his son. Then all three of us laughed as the story ends so very well. I've told this tale in many schools and libraries and the question most often asked upon me in its completion is, did Turtle really lie to the children? I always answer truthfully and ask, would you tell a lie to save your life? Nearly everyone nods or says yes. In the ancient stories of the East and in the more current tales of the West, Turtle symbolizes Mother Earth. Many creation myths say that a turtle, that turtle carries the world on her back and thus represents nature's innate wisdom. In this time of ecological destruction and hope for resurrection, it's worth remembering Turtle's courage and wit. That wraps up our story for today. I'm not going to put a list of resources in there for you. For this one, your activity is to just go find out about some other folk tales. They often involve animals, so maybe think of your favorite animal and see if you can find a folk tale about that animal. If anybody finds any folk tales that they really enjoy, I would love to know about them. You can leave a comment down below with your favorite. And you could also try writing your own folk tale about an animal that could teach us a lesson. Or lots of times folk tales are about um, why something is the way it is. For example, you could write a story about why dolphins have a blowhole in the top of their head. I actually wrote that story in second grade. But you could write whatever story you wanted to and it's really fun to just kind of make up your own story and maybe it's going to be a story that you pass down to your kids or you tell your kids or they tell their kids and it keeps going and going and going. All right, have a good week. We'll see you again for story time in two weeks. And until then, get out and enjoy nature. We have our Halloween walks out right now, um, both in Pine River and Trempolo and Winona. So we have lots of options for you. Get out and do it before Halloween because they're only going to be out till November 1st. And you can learn a lot more about some really dangerous reptiles on that walk. We'll see you later. Bye.